Hi guys, it's me, Joseph Anderson again. And in this video that I'm talking about, um, disability talks, I decided to talk about something very special to me and very unique to me. For episode 9 of the little series that I'm doing, I shall be talking about AIDS. And no, I'm not talking about the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, because that's a horrible disease. And uh, I pray to every god imaginable that that is eliminated anytime soon within my lifetime, because it's a very horrible disease as it as um, <clears throat> HIV and then becomes AIDS. It's very devastating to the human body and it's very devastating to the human spirit. But I will not be talking about that. But one thing I will say about it is that anyone that makes jokes about it deserves to go to hell. And there's a special place in, in hell for the person who thought that that would be a good joke for their song You Have AIDS sung by the Barbershop Quartet in the Family Guy. Yeah, I, I think that that person goes to hell. But in any case, on a more happy note, I should, I should be talking about AIDS with with Iggy in, in the middle of it. Because I have had several AIDS over the past many, many years. Mo most of them have been selected for me by various government agencies and whatnot. But, but for those that are, that I hand choose myself, <clears throat> they're actually more, uh, more personal, more, um, more, um, They fit more, more, more of my personality and then more of um, my age, so that more of um, them, more used to my sense of humor, my abilities, and whatnot, and they challenge me. But, but I'll get to that eventually. So, when I was in kindergarten, I had my first aide. She was a very, a very nice woman. That eventually got me nervous, and vice versa, because she was a prim and proper. Uh, I think at the end of the sixth grade, we both agreed that it was time to go our separate ways. Because if not, we would drive each other to point of murdering with another. Now, when I first got her at my age, she was, she was, I'm going to say mid-50s, somewhere around there. Very nice woman, by the way. Very prim, proper, intelligent, and all that. But the problem was that, as you can tell, I'm a man. I'm a boy. And she was a woman. So there can be a little bit of a problem with that. Most notably in the bathroom situation, because I, like most people, had to use the bathroom, you know, during the course of the school day, you know, from 8, from eight, to, eight to about 3 in the afternoon, you had to go to classes and stuff, and you had to, you know, you had to go to the bathroom at certain points. And for me, it was earlier in the day because my bus would often pick me up from my home and drive me there earlier than than every other person in school there. So it was a tremendous pain in the ass for me. I would get there around maybe 7, 7, 7 30 ish 
one day we happened to have a snow emergency, but my school is very um, stubborn about closing the school for snow days, since so they kept open to live the last possible second, and then they, they let me and my other people in the school that were picked up early, along with my age, and, and their age as well. And, um, then at the end of the time we had to go there, we, we got there, then, then they called for cancellation for school for the day. Then we had to get back on the bus and go back home. And by the time we were all done with everything, we were, we were sick and tired of it. We, 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 you know, the weather was called for bad weather that day anyway, so, lit, so, so why not give up one day for snow? But whatever, whatever, that was a bull, bullshit uh, day anyway. So, anyway, I, I had a I had female aides from the beginning, from my kindergarten years, to, well, my kindergarten year, <clears throat> all the way up through, through my, um, through 11th grade. That's when I had Mr. B, Miss BL, for my uh, last eight for the year. Now, how, why is this point? Why, why, why are bad things a big, big deal? Well, first of all, besides having a good bathroom, of course, I had to um, have my, my age with me to go into the bathroom because she helped me out with like notes, you know, paperwork, book bags, you know, the, you know, the puff of course. That's why I consider AIDS to be like a negative evil. Evil. And I'll, I'll get into that later on. But, um, because I wasn't the big kid you don't, you know, today. I used to be weak. It used to be, yeah, uh, not as articulate as I am now. M more, more commonly when I was, um, had, a re had two relapses in my life. <clears throat> that, that's the point. Anyway, I was, I was your average person, like, weak person back then. All throughout high school, all throughout my, uh, my, my elementary years. So, anyway, even, I needed help with my, my daily routine during the day. So, unfortunately, we had to, uh, we had to, uh, I, I was embarrassed to go into the bathroom with uh, female aides. That there were about, with her, with her. I, that year is so. I count at least at least five different aids over the course of those formerly of twelve years. Maybe they were more, maybe they were less. And it, some of them were. Some of them had like something to do with uh, male aides of uh, temporary reasons because they were out sick or something. I was sick or something. So that's understandable. But, um, yeah, whenever I would go to the bathroom, I'd be embarrassed to bring my female aid into the men's room. And this was way before all the transgender and the bathroom politics and all that came in it. came into play and all that was crap. You know, with the, you know, with the identity issues up there. So I was embarrassed to bring my, my aid into the, in, into the men, men's room in the school, even though there was no actual problem with it. So, um, anyway, there was still a problem with that. So, when I was younger, at least, what I would do is I would have to crawl, crawl up my hands and knees 
into the bathroom and then go to urinal or the toilet and then do it that way. That was really, really horrible for me because obviously not every kid has perfect aim, especially younger ones. <clears throat> So, they would often uh, miss, and I would end up getting on my hands eventually, on my knees or legs. So, of course you could wash it off, but you would have to crawl back out, back into the tub. So, I either had to do that, or get my teacher, or go to the bathroom at nurse's office. So, I figured, you know, to see me something embarrassing. <clears throat> I developed a very simple way to deal with it. That'd be holding it in. And let me tell you something. That worked on the temporary circumstances, but when I would do it for long term, like when I used to do it for like um, over the course of say a couple weeks or months, it got to be very painful and very obnoxious, especially when the bus ran late, and especially when I had to make a mad dash for my own toilet at home. So, because, because of their incompetency and their, um, their, their uh, laxity, laxity, that's the wrong word, we're dealing with a uh, First disabled student, that'd be me in a wheelchair. I had to suffer physical and traumatic pain because of that, which isn't right. Now, also, um, <clears throat> this didn't work out all the time either because one time I didn't, act, I didn't actually make it in time to go to the nurse's room. And um, my mother had to come in to clean up the mess. And it wasn't really pretty. But that's enough of that, of that. I got to go home early, so that was fine with me. Because I hated that school. For that and for other reasons too, which I may get into it in another day, maybe not. But uh, I, I really hate that school a lot. For the mishandling of my case, for the superintendent to so do in a moment, as well as other issues with, the, with my therapists, which I'll get to on a different day. For right, for right now, it just sucked balls to deal with all that stuff. So, they help me out with my bags with my uh, my heavy stuff with my uh, <clears throat> lunch for example you know I will get to go out of class early so I could beat the rush to the, to the cafeteria because well nobody had any real um, nobody really had any uh, patience or um um, or, um, kindness when it came to a disabled person. They, they wanted their food and they want it now. So that's like what they, what they got. They got their food now. And fuck the king of this year. You know, let's them alone in, in with the little kids, with the baby kids. Because that's where the bathroom was. The bathroom was the game where the little kids were. So that's where I was, pretty much. I didn't get to go outside that much. When I did, I used my power chair, which was slow, with my aid at the ready, too. So, with a kind of slow group at that. And of course, I used my walker. The same walker that I'm using at the gym at times. It made by the Rift Company. Yeah, a bunch of Amish people really make a good job 
Walker and Goodall, furniture and metalwork company too. So anyway, I, I would have the aid there to help me out with stuff. Now, back to the superintendent of mine. Now, I, my superintendent, well, one of my superintendents, was a real rich, a witch. And I don't think that too late because she was, um, you know, like something, let's say, somebody that bit someone that this or that, this thing, and they're like, no, nah, he, he joking around and he playing around and stuff. No, when I, when I see this one with a witch, I mean, she was a, a real pinny ass witch. Like, I mean, like, to the point that she should not be around children. She was that toxic of a person to deal with. She did not like me. She did not like my wheelchair. She wanted me out of that building, which was uh, all together. She just wanted me out of her hair, out of her life, out of her job description, out of everything. Which was legal. My mother had to get legal aid four different times to get me into that school. So, that, that's her right. You know, that was the end of it, right? No. We, we had to attend CSE meetings. You know, my mother, later on my father would attend these meetings where, you know, that it's really serious if my father attends one of these meetings. And, um, I forgot all of what that means with CSE. It means something to do with special education, or good to make it on special education. Something like that. So, um, she, she wasn't allowed to go into the meetings. But you know who could go into the meetings? <clears throat> my AIDS. My diabetes. And it turns out that my, my, um, superintendent wanted so badly to join the meetings and to make a little work. Tom, Dick, or Harry commentary for it. And they're like, no, no, we can't do this. No, we can't have that. No, we can't do this. No, we can't do that. In fact, one time, I first got done with having a relapse. And I first got my power chair. She, when I came in, she did not say hello to me. She did not say, like, how you doing? You know, it's good to see you back here and stuff. How's your family doing? She just said, Look, Joe, if you, if you hit one thing with your chair, if you, if you injure anybody with your chair, you're out. I'm thinking that myself. I said, It's me, you too. It's just you too. So, anyway, in these yes memes, the only, the only people that could attend are me. Well, I was in school at the time, but my, my, um, the CSE is better education people. My parents and the people who work with me, like my aides and my therapists. And I'm, I'm sure, like, the, yeah, maybe the bus driver here and there. So, so it was a pretty close knit group of people. But what she did was she would have like um spies in the form of my aides, <clears throat> and she would give them incentive to be my spies to to report to her what went on in during these CSC meetings and each, each person would have like each disabled person or physically impaired person or whatever the case would be would have their own CSC meetings but because she didn't like me in particular she just had advice for me for my meetings like looking right 
certainly would. She would speak. I don't know the exact specification of what she would say to these people, but it's more like, you know, if you don't, if you don't report to me, you're fired. If you don't say what I say, what I want you to say, you're, you're out. We'll buy your country out of the, out of the school. You're out. Good. She did that to my therapist times. And sure enough, the school board ended up by her own contract out, and everyone was happy. And you see people doing the dances in the hallways. You see people, I'm assuming, doing backflips too in the hallways. Te teachers, mind you. So, yeah, everyone was happy to go. So, that, that's one thing. If they might. But it made once was so attached to me that um a couple months after my mother died we ran to her in the cafe with her family and um it was like a little touching because she said to me I couldn't go to your mother's funeral because we were on vacation. Well, we know that your mother was proud of you. Just like I, just like I am, Joe. They look at you right here in the fields, and then we were all crying and stuff. The point that the buffet, the buffet staff was like, What are you doing to this poor kid? Are you okay? And then the woman said, You know, we're okay. It's okay. And I never thought after that, but I'm pretty sure she's alright. She has a son, daughter, and her husband to take care of him. I used to refer to him as. Mr. Clean, <laughs> Mr. Clean, because he was the head gender. But whatever, whatever the case is. Now, for the more interesting part of this. Okay, socializing is very important for a teen youth or youth. I got a little my cousin Vinny putting it into. But you get the idea, socialization is very important to kids. You know, whether it be going to dance, whether it be going to, uh, uh, you know, a party or something like that, whether it be going on dates and things like that. Something that I would not, I would not know about, because I never went on dates or parties. But that puts the point. The thing about age is that they're always with you. They're always with me or with anybody else for that matter. Always monitoring you and wanting to help you out and stuff. Which is in the job description. I mean, the definition that we need to help out. But, um, yeah, that's one thing that kind of gets in the way of socialization is that when you're a teacher and when you're a little kid you don't want to be around adults you want to socialize with other people who are other you know who are, who are the same level who are the same age and level of skills as you are you know that's how you make friends and such so to be around, to be around a full adult, a, a middle-aged adult, more or less, puts up, puts up, puts up such a barrier between you and the other people of your own age group. So like, when I was in, in like, a third grade, for example, and people were talking about like, 
Gundam or watching a movie or something like that. I couldn't, I couldn't partake in it because I had met a dad that was 50 something years old. And, uh, of a, di of a different gender than my, my own. So, that put a big creep in my uh, socialization skills. I, I didn't really have it, I didn't have a chance there. So, anyway, there was also the notion that I, could, I couldn't get any of the, of the details to go with any of the, uh, you know, what's, what's new, what's hip, you know, what's trending, what's, what's, what's up with you guys, the cool group, because I have an age with me, because I have an age, uh, you know, coming along, coming behind me and stuff. You know, I couldn't, um, uh, couldn't socialize with my friends back, going to the collect tower or going to my Green Key's basement to make out with my future wife, Captain Brewster, or I couldn't um, talk about going to this new uh, party or this new R rated movie or whatever because I had the aid with me too. And while I'm at it, I might well talk about the harness that they gave me. They gave me like this, um, Looping harness that would, uh, that the aid could grab behind my back in case I fall. In case I fall. Now, it looped around my shoulders, it looked kind of like a, kind of like a backpack, more or less, without the actual bag for my stuff in the back. So then, that was actually a little bit embarrassing. Cause it looked like one of those, um, one of those kid leashes that they, that they have. It's kind of embarrassing for kids anyway. But that would part of my daily um, outfit, if you will. Now also, on attention to that, there was one aid that I had that was very strong physically. And she didn't know her own strength that well. So what she did was, whenever I would bend over for water, to get a drink from water, she, I had a, like a big white belt on it before I got the harness thing. And um, it was, um, she would, she would yank me back, like real fast. So, to prevent me from falling over. This would just crash my belly. Now, at the same time, I was having bad reflux problems. So, it's, it's no fault of hers or anything, but I'm just saying that that also contributed to my uh, acid reflux. You know, the constant pump back of my body in that particular part of my body and it was um yeah it was pretty yeah uh, and it was kind of intense i mean she used to call it warring the temple which was pretty funny at the time <clears throat> but uh, yeah I, I would say that he was Unnecessary eel for that reason. Um, because of her, or because it stunted my emotion and my, um, <clears throat> and my, um, the socialization skill too. My, my social growth as a human being. Now, when I go to the gym, I used to have a fridge. Up and quit on me, but that's okay because I, I really didn't need any. Aid. I just kept him on to keep him with with a job. So I I just I I would not need any. Aid. Even the people over there, like Joe 
no need, need. And I could me that I could do stuff I do over there without, without him or her for that matter. Because I can go to the bathroom myself. I can use the weak machine myself. I can use the ball out machine myself. I can clean, clean everything off myself. Not as good as with aid, but still. I can do pretty well. And I'm actually really surprised that I can do everything on my own pretty much. And I have to do the poor bars. I need somebody up there to help me out in case I fall or in case I'm too free to do stuff. So, yeah. Also, I should point out that I'm... This might sound ageist, but it's really not meant to be ageist. That being a favorite to support ages, you know, for younger, old people, or whatever. Most of the aids that I had in the past were, um, were older, like over 40 and but above that. So, um, oh yeah, I can tell you this funny story about, about this. We have to talk about ages. Ages of stuff. My last age, the male, the male one, was a uh, was a really tall guy, but he was very young. Young, he was like twenty something years old when he began with with me. So he was really nice and really young. Uh, a really nice guy. I wish I wish all people would like him more or less. Anyway, think about it. Because we, because we were younger, I felt I could uh, talk to him more about personal issues rather than an older, an older woman. You know what I'm saying? So um, about 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 just random topics, like random things, like that. You know, like things that boys talk about, like women, girls, uh, you know, uh, video games, you know, fishing, etc., etc., etc. Whereas with women, aids, I couldn't really talk about them. Not only that, but because I felt so um, separated from. The other people in my class, like the girls, the guys, or whatever, I I felt I felt more of a tie to the people who were my teachers, my principal, for example, my aides. So I kind of I kind of accelerate in the maturity value for that in that regard, but by force. You know, if, if I had my only, I would, be, I would talk to the people who were, um, you know, I would talk to my peers. You know, like that, uh, the, the other teenagers, the other, um, in, in grade and that. <clears throat> but, you know, rather than having a older person just stay so tell them, like you were a, a, Hawkeye, a Hawkeye person, you know, and they were um, a front officer or something like that. And so now, let me talk about one of the better parts of the whole eight thing. I remember that in sixth grade, there was a guy that was, um, being yelled at by this older teacher, and she no, she's known for her temper and being loud and all that. She mailed out a few a few uh, years later I hear, but she was oh you know yelling at this one kid who in the years ended up becoming a prick. And I know for for a fact that he became like that. Because he kept yelling at me, saying that, you know, that, I'm a, that I brought up the fact that 
They never invited me anywhere in class and stuff like that. So he, he didn't like that. So he tried to ship me up for good for that. And so, um, nowadays I show that I'm a bigger and much more tougher than I used to be. Whereas they, everyone else in class are getting, you know, chubbier, getting aged. They're getting more, um, more used to mirror life and kids and all that. So they're not, they're more funky. But in any case, back to the story. So I was over there. And, um, keep in mind, this was my last year with my first female aide. And she was, um, very, um, she knew my sense of humor, and, uh, <laughs> so, the, we have this older teacher that's, you know, not this younger guy, who would love, like, he would love back a year or so, so he was, um, being, being berated by this teacher. So, sometimes whenever I, whenever I see something like this, I see my age, I've got some sarcastic remarks, like in general, because I view them as more friends than the actual peers in my class, because I feel closer to my age than I did with the rest of the class. In, in, uh, in uh, World War High School. So anyway, what he did with, I would say, um, <clears throat> let's see to this woman. Keep in mind, she's in her 50s at this point, at least 50s, maybe, maybe 50s, late like 50s. And so I told her, it must be that time of the month again for her, for the teacher. Keep in mind that this woman went like in her sick jeans. So I didn't know that th that part of a woman's life the end that uh, way before that point in time before her. So I assumed that it was an ongoing thing to, to death. So so, my Eve's face turned red, red as an apple. And she was like, um, the teacher heard me say something, but she didn't say, he didn't hear either, but what it was. So, she, got, she turned to my, my Eve and said, what did he say? <laughs> Inside. <laughs> a woman was dying because <laughs> on the one hand she thought what I said was a good buddy <laughs> but on the other hand she didn't want me getting food for it <laughs> she didn't want me to get the, the horns from this already mad teacher but she knew her duty to actually talk, talk about it and say what I said to the class you know, in case I, in case I uh, don't get anything um, spoken, if I, if too low or soft spoken, which I was, but uh, it was just so, so funny. There's a, there's a time to resolve where we had an English teacher who would Someone have it sit like in front of a um, TV and he used to have like, a comfortable couch in the, in the corner of the room somewhere. So every, every time that he would say, go, go, go over there, you know, everyone would rush over there and say, you know, fuck the kid in the you know, let, let's go there first, let's beat into the punch. So I would always say to the teacher, you know, can you let me know in advance that you can 
do you gonna um, to have it sit there so I can get you know comfortable sitting around the the car seat of everyone else. He said, yeah, sure, I'll do that for you. And he did that for, for us, so it was like a real privilege of mine to sit with the pretty girls in class. In fact, now I'm talking, now I'm talking about that, before I get into my next topic I can eat, is that when I was doing my Smith class picture, we, we did like eight in, eight in the zero picture and stuff. So, or like, um, you know, um, it was like, you can bring whatever props that you want to bring for the, for the pictures. And so I took one picture and he said, wait a minute, there are two beautiful girls in my class that otherwise wouldn't have any interaction with me whatsoever. Because on uh, one day, they said to me, they said, um, like, no, like, no support. They were like, we know what you had. We know what you had. And they, they, they did, like, a whole big chunk into it. You know, like, they, they were secretly coming to my house at night, looking in my window and seeing what I have and stuff, as far as, um, my disease goes. So anyway, I know it's wrong that I pick up these golden objects, but they were real bitches to me, cold bitches when they, when they were in school. And they still are because they haven't said a word to me since then. So I don't feel bad, so I took pictures with them. I saw one between two roses. That's what I like to say. I am. Well, anyway, back to talking about eats. <clears throat> now, that was, all of that was not in high school. Everything I did with elementary through high school, all one building, all the nine, nine nights and stuff like that. So, then I go to college. I have to find an eight days to do my notes and my, write, write down my homework and whatever and whatnot. So I'm packing, you know, my, my school and piling up, you know, my bag work and piling up and stuff. And I need to meet the lines for my papers and math problems and whatever else, what have you. So the people over there, the assess for like, if we, if we can't help you, if we can't help your son out, you, he's going to go out there. So my mom said, uh, over, over my dead body, sorry mom, but um, you know, my, my ass, that he's not going anywhere. So, I had to find my own aids. Luckily, my, my friend and my sweet knew of some, some people and later on at that more people would show up from other friends but the thing is that I was able to get AIDS that were my own age my own maturity level my own, they understood my sense of humor and they were pretty too because unlike the first batch of AIDS that were all, 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 all women, I got beautiful women. You'll never guess what, what nationality they were. They were all Chinese women. <laughs> yeah. One was Chinese. One was, um, one was, um, Make a mixture of black, black, white, and Native American, and the other one is uh, Italian. In fact, now that I think of it, I'll put that in my thumbnail picture. picture. So, my thumbnail for this picture will be that them three surrounding me. 
you know, you'll see how a bunch of uh, Playboy uh, guy you see. Mm. They, we call it Charlie in the It was so much fun. And they were all the sweethearts. And they were all very beautiful. And they were very nice and everything. But that's what the one eight I had was a little bit of a. Of a if she took behind my bus service back, I refer to her as Fatty Make Fat Cat, which is not right because the bus driver was, was a nice person. You know, maybe she was a little bit uh, chunky, but calling her that name, that name was just plain wrong. I liked her. But the, just at the point. And then, um, <clears throat> they were all nice. The guy I with, with this guy too, and they ate. But it was nice because they, could, my, they were my choice. They were my personal choice. And the, the, the hand, choose your aids is always a bad choice. And to be given one and be forced to take that one aid with you, e even though it tends to uh, take a long time for like medical tests and other stuff, blood work and you know, physical testing and stuff like that. Case in point, when I went to New Balls, that goddamn school, I went. I went to get. Some eight, two, two eight actually, two lovely women. One was like premature for age, and the other was um pretty nice too. But um, they were good women. I'll take her with my homework, writers, my uh, you know, other, other things too. They would uh, help me out with that uh, professional stuff like showering and stuff, and I would help them out with like. Like writing down like um recommendations, etc., etc. You know, because I would take care of myself and stuff in college. So they 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 would take care of the stuff that my father would normally take care of, like showering and um you know helping me with food and uh you know I could feed myself, but just gain the food to the the um table with the challenge and drink too etc 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 so they would help me out with that they got to be my aids however they, they I would I would like how of course they had a chance to do uh, to complete their, their medical requirements so okay it was fine and dandy but back to my other aid. I had one aid that they, that they gave to me that was a real pest. She was a um, person that was a spoiled brat. Made fun of everybody. Even my aid that made fun of my bus driver at the time. So she was not a very nice woman. And, you know, that that was what my mother and father would take care of me. So I could, I could rely on them for like showering and food and stuff like that. But she was there for my homework needs, for my education, stuff like that. For my book, too. The Battle of the Wicked Kiosk. So, anyway. She was um, a rude person too. <laughs> she said, You can't fire me. Oh, yes, I can. And I did. Because she just made too many wise, wise, frank comments, too many sarcastic things for all good. 
So, anyway, she does it to high money to be fired by a person in, in, in her care. I don't know if I have a lot of women, but I just hope she, she humbled it out a little bit more, a little bit for her own sake. But um, it's like that. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, hope she, I hope she looking forward to more aid in the future. Like, um, I, I can I can cook for myself. I don't want to cook for myself. In fact, last time I tried to prepare for myself, bad things happened in my hand. And uh, I, I have the, the, I have the, the implement to prove it. It was a drawer than my habits. And I will be making a separate video on it. And uh, trust me, you are not going to like it too much. When you, when you see this thing, because it looks more like a ninja weapon than an actual cutting implement for food and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna need that. I need some, somebody to help me with, like, uh, beside food preparation, like, um. <clears throat> I can pretty good in the shower myself. I'm pretty good at like um, cleaning stuff. More, more for stuff that I might reach. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat that when I move out. Sorry. Like being like cleaning organization, etc., etc. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was actually really fun to have it around to help me out with stuff, to subscribe more with me, to like be, be more mature with me and stuff, and be, to have fun with me. Especially being in college and talking about girls and classes and, and the gym and all that stuff too. So yeah, um, you will, you will also see a nice picture of me when I was 20 years old. Not when I was double, double that now. So, in other words, I still be young. I'm not a vampire. I'm not a, a, a moral demon that has like a you're trying to do anything like that. I'm not, I'm not really the kind of leaves. Although I, I wish I was. But, um, yeah. That was pretty fun. Anyway. If you guys want, I think you guys watched watch my video on episode number 9. 8 on 8. My own personal aid, not not the horrible disease. Now I, I hope you guys learned a lot about this. About you know that. Oh yeah, I I, I won't forget about one very important thing. One very very important detail. We'll get to that after do my little spiel. But um, if you guys like what you see here, oh yeah, that was this very talk episode number nine. Uh, Eat. I eat. <clears throat> if you guys want, if you guys um, <clears throat> like we see you want more of my videos, you know, always like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. Or if you want, you can always um. <clears throat> Contact me or text me or call me on my cell phone at 631-707-3707. And if you want, you can, uh, you can uh, get me on Twitter at pmelsonpro. 
Oh, I like to prefer it. Why do you meet me at um <clears throat> my email at JJ's viewing channel at the JJ viewing channel at gmail.com and I salute all the people out there that have AIDS the helpers and um <clears throat> I would like to say peace out my brothers and sisters. Now before I say goodbye to everyone, I gotta tell you this funny thing. Now, my age, well, well three of my age in college were very attractive women. I mean very attractive women. So when um when I'm with them you know, do do my daily stick over there at school. I would invite them to uh, ride my chair along with me. So it was it was like really funny to see a guy in a scooter with with a woman on the back of a chair, like a motorcycle, not like Jelly Five in short circuit, but like. Riding on, on the seat with me, the spread legs and everything. I wouldn't want to do that with a me with me screw on or whatever. But we had done it was fine. And uh, <clears throat> next funny thing is that my my fear is that I'd be going to a, a movie a more. Uh, Going to a park with a girl, and men on the head probably you know that this person can't possibly be going out, out with this girl, this beautiful girl, hanging out with the guy in the wheelchair. So they would probably think that that the girl would be my age rather than my girlfriend or fiance or whatever. So then, it'd be real funny if um, it, they end up trying to hit on the person, trying to get the phone number and whatnot, in front of me, and talking to me, talking to my, my age, it, my my girlfriend, instead of me saying that, oh yeah, by the way, I had this one professor of mine talking to my, talking to my age, was my cousin at the time talk, talking to her, talking about me directly to in front of my face. Like, does he know how to read? Like, yes, I do. Prick. So, yeah, it'd be funny if a, if a guy would like and talk to my girlfriend or fiance and saying that. Leave that guy behind. Let him, let him play in traffic. And then Billy. No, I, I think he needs to leave now, buddy. No. She, she's with me. She's my girlfriend. She should be a fiance. So you could play in traffic. <clears throat> That's the way a boss handles his. Is up. Uh, Posers, I should say. So, yeah. Aloha, aloha, guys. We'll see you in the next video. We'll be talk we're going to be talking about Terrorist Challenge. And it should be real fun. Aloha. All you guys, throw it into land.